All right, it's one o'clock. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I, I just started the recording, um, but before we begin, how's everybody? How's everyone doing? Everybody doing okay? Everybody good? I hope everyone's doing well. <laughs> okay. All right. So what I want to do um, today is I want to go back and work. Um, I want to finish up the binomial probability distribution. So um, if you have it handy, take out your calculator, either your TI-83 or your TI-84 calculator. Either one, we're, I'm going to do all the problems using both of them so you can see the... Uh, the subtle difference of how you have to input them. It's a little bit easier on the TI-84 today than it is the TI-83, but it's it's not that bad. So I wanna do that. Uh, so I just wanna get that out of the way first. And then what I'll do is I'll take any homework questions that you might have. So if you go into the classroom, look under homeworks, you have your homework number three is due next Tuesday. So I'll, I'll be more than happy to work through any of these problems with you, okay? Um, just to help you get started on them, um, you know, there, this right here, this homework is a really, really good way to study for the exam. Like I looked at, but before class started, I looked over exam number two and, you know, if you could do this homework, um, you're going to rock, you're going to ace, literally ace exam number two. Okay. And then what I'll do after that, after I take homework questions, I'll do a quick little exam review on any topics that I feel like we haven't talked about, you know, specifically on the homework review, things like that. Okay, so just that final reminder, homework number three is due next Tuesday. And also exam number two is going to be next Tuesday. And um, so the exam. Oh, shoot. Just for your own reference, the exam is 22 questions. And it's the same format as the first exam. All right, so there'll be a mix of multiple choice and um, numerical answers, just like the first exam. All right, so does anybody have any just general questions, not homework questions, um, because I'll do a, uh, I'll, I'll take homework questions after we do the binomial probability distribution, finish that up. But does anybody have any questions about the exam or anything in general? No questions, everybody's good. That's pretty quiet, so. I'm sorry. So I might have one at the end of class. Okay, no problem, no problem. Um, all right, well then why don't we do, why don't we go and start and do the binomial probability distribution, then we'll do homework questions and then, you know, then we'll hop into exam review and any questions people might have. All right, so I actually wanna show you, um, so this today is the binomial probability distribution again. And if you guys remember last class on Tuesday, I did one example of this. Does anybody remember the example I did? It was about a basketball player, right? LeBron. Yeah, thanks. LeBron James. Okay. And so we are talking, we, the example was this, LeBron is gonna shoot 10 free throws. Okay. Uh, and he makes 80% of his shots. Okay. So the first question was this, what's the probability LeBron makes exactly eight of the 10. Okay. So this is, this is 
this is what we did last class. We said, okay, we don't know how many free throws LeBron James is going to make. Okay, we don't. We want to find the property he makes exactly eight, but I, I don't know how many he's going to take. So I'm going to define this variable. I'm going to let X be equal to the number of free throws he makes in 10 shots. Okay. And here's what we said. We said, well, look, this is a discrete random variable. And it also turns out that this is a binomial, what we call the binomial experiment. Okay. Um, and the reason was is because it met this four requirements from last class right here. Performed a fixed number of times. Trials are independent. Excuse me. Each trial has only two outcomes. So either makes or misses. And we said the probability of success never changes. So we went through this formula last class. It ended up being 10 choose eight times 0 0.80 to the eighth power times 0 0.20 squared, okay? And if you look back, we saw that the probability of this ended up being a 0 0.302. Okay, so there has to be an easier way to do this. Okay, and that's what I wanna show you in this class today. So on your exam, you're gonna get um, one of these binomial questions on the exam, okay? Um, it's actually the last, just to give you like a little preview for the exam, right? So the last two questions on your exam, questions number 21 and 22, are these binomial probability distribution questions, okay? So what I don't think you wanna do is I don't think you wanna do this by hand. Okay, so there has to be an easier way. And it turns out your calculator can really help us here. All right, and you guys remember at the end of class, I started to show this to you all. Just post in the chat if you remember that. I did it real quickly. All right, Melissa says, yeah. Okay. Anybody else remember it? Okay, Storm says, yeah. Okay, great. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in both the TI-83 and the TI-84. All right, so everybody grab your calculator, doesn't matter which one. And you're gonna look for this, everybody can see my mouse, right? Where my mouse is on the screen. Do, 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 do. Everybody sees it, okay. You wanna find this, this button that says D-I-S-T-R, this option that says D-I-S-T-R. So you're gonna to have to hit second function, D-I-S-T-R, second function, D-I-S-T-R. And then what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down till you see these things called A and B here, which is the binome PDF and the binome CDF. Okay. How many, uh, how many people are with me? How many people see this on their calculator? I see. Okay. Good, good. Just like a mirror. Just like a mirror. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So what the... What this stands for, the binome stands for binomial, okay, which is binomial, which is what we have. Now, PDF stands for what's called a probability density function, and CDF stands for what's called a cumulative density function, all right? We're going to more formally define both the probability density function and the cumulative density function in the next um, class or in the next section. But if you want to find, so just this is incredibly important. If you want to find the probability where you're exactly equal to something, okay, where it's just an equal, you're going to use the binome PDF. If you ever want to find a probability where it's less than or equal to some value, okay, then you're going to use the binome CDF, okay? And what you're going to have to put into all of these things are the same three things. Okay. So let's actually redo this using our calculator and see if we get the same thing. Okay. So look at this problem. It's a probability X is equal to eight. Would I use the binome PDF or the binome CDF here? CDF. You binome gonna use, CDF. You're going to use the PDF. Look, it's equal equal. 
Okay, so whenever you have, you want to find the probability that X is exactly equal to a number, you're going to use the binomepedia. Okay. So let's everybody go click on whatever your calculator is, the binome PDF. So if you have the TI-83, what you notice is this just comes up like this. And if you have the TI-84, what comes up is this. Okay. So the TI-84 makes it a little bit easier. The TI-83, you're going to have to just remember this. So you're going to have to write this down. Okay. So the first thing it asked for is the number of trials. Okay. So that was how many shots LeBron James was going to make or, or uh, not make, how many shots LeBron James was going to shoot. So how many did we say he was going to shoot? Um, for whoever, I don't want to say your name, you know, because you message me privately, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, so, so for the number of trials, I'm sorry, how many, how many shots was he taking? Was it 10? LeBron James was going to shoot 10. Does that ring a bell? Yes. Okay. So if you have the TI-84, you put 10 here. If you have the TI-83, what you have to do, and watch this very carefully, you have to type the number 10. And then does everybody see where this comma is on your calculator here? Does everyone see this with me? You have to press this comma button. Okay. So over here, the next thing you're going to put in is P, which is the probability of success. Okay. Um, so what was the probability I said LeBron James makes a free throw? Eight. Yep, 80%. 80%. You have to put it in, very important, as a decimal, okay? So over here, the next thing you have to put in is 0 0.80 and then another comma, okay? In X is the number of successes. So if you look back here, I wanted LeBron James to make exactly eight. So you're going to put eight here and then over back on the TI-83, you're going to put an eight. On the TI-84, you're going to go down now and click paste. And you should see this binome PDF 10 comma 0 0.80 comma eight. So at the TI-83, just close your parentheses. And now everybody hit enter on their calculator. How many people got this with me? Let me know in the chat or on, turn your mic on. People getting this with me? Taylor, thank you. Good. Now look at that. That was just like so incredibly easy. And look, that's the same answer we got, okay? So we went 10 comma 0 0.80 comma 8 and we got the same answer. So what you have you to pull up the calculator again, just one more time. I just want to double check. Say that again. Do you mind pulling up the calculator one more time? I just want to double check. Yep. Oh. You got that? All right. Yes, I did. Thank you. All right. So what you're going to put into the calculator all the time, it's N, which is the number of trials. Then you go P, which is the probability of success. And then it wants X, okay, which is the number of successes. Okay, it is the same thing that you put in for the binome CDF, okay? So let me, I want to do a binome CDF problem with you, okay? So I think we did, uh, what was this problem? Do you guys remember the last question we did? What's the probability LeBron makes seven or less? So it was this. So it was a probability X is less than or equal to seven. And we got 0 0.323. Okay. We did it by hand, right? We found X is greater than or equal to eight. And then we did one minus it. And it was like, ugh, this was really hard. Okay. So watch this probability that X is less than or equal to seven for LeBron James example. So everybody grab your trusty calculator. Okay. 
So you're going to go second function distribution again. And when you want a less than or equal, you're going to scroll all the way down to binome CDF. Binome CDF. And everybody just hit enter. So again, it's going to want the trials, which is 10. So over here, you're going to type 10, comma. The probability of success is 0 0.80. That never changes. So over here, 0 0.80, comma. And now here's the thing. I want seven or less, OK? So I'm going to type seven. So over here, seven. Close the parentheses. And look what we got. How many people who were following along with me got 0 0.32222? 0. Awesome. Now look look back at we, what we got when we did this by hand, OK? We got 0 0.323. The reason ours is off a little bit here when we did it by hand was because we rounded all these values to three decimal places, OK? So let me ask you this. Now that you saw the calculator, is it is it not too bad? This is awesome, Professor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I sometimes I just think the hardest thing for these problems is um, getting the information from the problem and then um, knowing what to put in where. Like I think that's generally the hardest part. Okay. So what I want to do with the time we have uh, now before our first break is I just want to go through and do two more examples just so you can like see the type of problems I'll ask. All right. Is that okay with everybody? And we're just going to stick to using our calculator. Okay. All right. Everybody okay if I go to the next slide? Yeah, I think. Good. All right, so this is example number two. Okay, this is the second one. So LeBron James was example, was the first example. Okay. Okay, so according, according to um, MJS Consulting, In a recent survey of college students, it was found that 75% loved taking statistics. What do you guys think of that number? Oh, they better have had you as a teacher, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, Melissa, in the chat there. It, that seems low, okay? It should be much higher. I mean, everybody loves taking statistics, right? All right, so what that means is if you were to select a student at random, okay, the probability that they love taking stats is 0 0.75. Okay. So now here's the question. I've got a couple questions for you, actually. Suppose nine students or nine college students are selected at random. Okay. And the number All right, who love taking statistics is counted. Okay. So let me ask you this question. So I'm, I'm just trying to set this up, okay? I'm gonna to talk to nine college students. Um, do I know how many of the nine are going to love taking statistics? Like, do I know ahead of time before I talk to the nine? No. No, no, you don't. Okay, so it's a so it's a random unknown variable here. So I'm gonna let X 
be equal to the number of college students in nine that love taking stats. Okay. So this is a discrete random variable because there's a finite number of outcomes. And it's actually, again, it's a binomial experiment because um, it meets the four criteria. It's performed a fixed number of times. Okay, like, so how many college students are we talking to here? Talking, yep, I'm talking to nine college students. Okay, and then there's only two things that can happen, right? Okay, they can either love taking statistics or they do not love taking statistics. Personally, I don't know how that's possible, but okay. Um, uh, the trials are independent. You know, if one student's like taking statistics, it has no bearing on if the other student does or doesn't. And the probability that someone loves taking statistics never changes. It's just 0 0.75. Okay. All right. So here's, here are the two questions. What's the probability that exactly seven of the nine love taking statistics? Okay. So this is going to be this question. What's the probability that X, the number of students is equal to, I want seven. Okay. So now once you've got this, um, can you just use one of the options in the calculator for this? What do you guys think? Can you use the binome or? Yes, we can. Okay, which yep, is it now? Is it the binome PDF or CDF here? PDF, I think. Say it louder. CDF. So PDF. whenever it's an equal, it's the PDF. So it's binome PDF. Okay, whenever it's just, I want exactly this number, it's binome PDF. So the first thing you're gonna have to put in is N. Okay, so it's N then P, then X. All right. What is my N here? What's the number of trials for this experiment? How many college students am I talking to? Nine. Yep. Next, P is the probability of success, okay? So what's the probability that someone loves taking statistics? 0 0.75. Yep. And then how many students out of the nine do I want? What's my X? What do you guys Seven. Seven. Yeah. So just grab your calculator now at this point. So you're going to go second function distribution. You're going to scroll all the way down to binome PDF. And so you're just going to put in what we have there. 9 comma 0 0.75 comma 7. So over here, 9 comma 0 0.75, comma 7. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks, Beatrice. How many people got exactly what, uh, what, what we got in the chat there and what you see on my screen? Awesome, awesome, yeah. So would you guys agree, like maybe just the hardest part is, you know, just figuring out what to plug into your calculator, but then once you, you know, once you're ready to go to the calculator, it's not too bad. Yep, I agree. Yeah. It seems it seems every time our problem is gonna be how to set it up. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna um, uh, so now that we're moving into you're gonna notice that um, 
as we move into the advanced stuff, that's that's all this is. Like we're gonna rely on technology to help us. And it's it's really just gonna be about setting it up. That's exactly right, what the problems are gonna boil down to. Okay. So this I'm just gonna go, this is 0 0.003. 0 0.3003. So now let me ask you another one here. Um, and I'm going to try to trick you. Okay. So, so is everybody okay if I go to the next slide? It's going to be the same, same type of problem, but just the second part. Pretty good. Yes. Okay. So, same problem here. What's the probability that less than seven students love taking statistics? Okay, so I want to find the probability that X is less than seven here. Okay. So then I talked to nine students and less than seven of them. Okay. All right, so let me ask you this. So going back, just real quick. Okay, is it going to be a PDF or CDF problem? Okay. It's going to be a CDF. It's going to be a CDF. Yeah. All right. So when I say less than seven, which is correct? Is, is it the first option here or the second? Which one is correct? One or two that I'm asking here? First one. First one. Because it's not less than or equal to. It's this one. I want less than seven. OK. So now hold on a second before we jump to the CDF, okay? Notice how there's a less than sign here. I wanna be less than seven. You use the CDF when there's a less than or equal to sign, okay? So it's a little bit of a problem, okay? A Little bit of a problem. But if you wanna be less than seven, okay? Can anybody tell me another way of writing this? using a less than or equal to? Hmm. Okay, Barry, you're right. Absolutely right, Barry. Um, so why could you, could you expand on that? Do you want to turn on your mic or in the chat? Like what you, you have the right answer. How'd you get it? I guess because six is less than seven. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, so you have to be really careful of how this stuff is answered, right? So like you want to be less than seven. So remember you're talking to students and counting the number who say they love taking statistics. So you could have zero of the nine, you could have one, you could have two, you could have three, you could have four, you could have five, you could have six, okay? So everything less than seven is the same as being less than or equal to six. Okay, so now once you have it set up like this, okay, now you can use the binome CDF. So remember it's N, I'm gonna to talk to nine students, P, the probability of success, which is 0 0.75, and then it's X. And this X is gonna be from this one right here. Like if you put in seven here, you're gonna get the problem wrong, okay? So you have to put in the number six because it because the CDF is everything, including that number below it. So you're gonna go second function distribution. You're gonna scroll down to the binome CDF. It's nine 
comma 0 0.75 comma 6. Yep, and thank you. Uh, no problem. I got a private message. Don't, no sweat. Don't even worry about it. Uh, so it's 0 0.3993. So again, like the calculator work here is not hard. It's just the hardest part is just always figuring out like, what do I have to plug in? Okay. And then that's the, that's, that, that's, that's legit the hard part here. Okay. All right. So just like Cassie, do you feel like, you know, having seen me do this examples, you feel like you could handle one on the, on the exam? Professor, I have a quick question. Yeah, of course. So where, for anything that's like X less than whatever the number, would it always just be one less than that? So if, if the problem says, yes, like if it just says less than 10, you would always plug in nine in the CDF, okay? But if it says less than or equal to say seven, like if this had been less than or equal to seven, then you would have plugged in seven. So you have, you, that's the hard part. Like you have to pay very close attention to how it's worded, you know? Okay, thank you. No problem. Professor, so yeah. the question F says greater than, does it have greater than or it just less than? So I'm, I'm, I'll do a greater than problem. So you you would actually use the complement then. Okay. Yeah, I'll do, I'm gonna do one more example where I'm gonna try to answer all, all the questions that people just had so that, it, so that I can have it make sense, okay? All right. Everybody okay if I go to the next slide? Yep. Okay. Well, forgive me, I'm really tired. My son decided to get up from like one till like two thirty last night for some reason, so not 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 the most sleep of my life last night. Okay, so this one, this problem is about um, uh, a drug, an over-the-counter uh, medicine called Claritin D. Okay. How many people have heard of uh, Claritin D before? Does anybody, okay, does, uh, what, what do people, what do you take Claritin D for? Yeah, yeah, so here's the thing. I get like super bad allergies, okay, myself. Uh, like every spring, I just like, I have a runny nose from like, <coughs> from like April till May, okay. So anyways, uh, I, I, for a while I tried taking Claritin D, but it has a, uh, it has a common side effect that, that, that happened to me, okay? So it turns out that 5% of Claritin D users experience insomnia. as a side effect. So for example, when I was taking Claritin D, okay, it was great. I didn't have runny nose or sneezing throughout the day, but then like, I just, I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> so it was like a trade-off. It was like, oh my God, terrible. Okay. Uh, so here's the problem. Okay. Just, just by looking at this, um, the probability that somebody who takes Claritin D experiences insomnia is 0 0.05. That's that's what we're saying here when we're say 5% of Claritin D users experience insomnia as a side effect. So now here's the question or setting it up. Suppose 20 Claritin D users are selected at random. And the number who experience insomnia is 
is recorded. So basically, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to 20, exactly 20 people who experience, or, or who, excuse me, who take uh, Claritin D. And just, we're just going to say, hey, look, did you sleep well last night? Did you sleep well last night? Okay, you know, and we're going to record the number who said, no, no, I had insomnia. It was terrible. Okay. So now here's the thing. Do, when, I, when I talk to the 20 people, do I know exactly how many of them are going to experience insomnia? No. No, no, I don't. You know, it could be one, it could be 20. I don't know. It could be zero. All right, so I'm going to define this variable. I'm going to let x be equal to the number who experience insomnia. in exactly 20 Claritin D users. Okay, so now here's the thing. This is, while it's a discrete random variable because there's a finite number of outcomes, uh, it's also a binomial random variable because uh, it's, it's performed a fixed number of times. We're talking to 20 people. There's only two things that could happen, okay? Um, you can experience insomnia or you get a, or you do not experience insomnia. That's all we're interested in. Um, trials are independent. So what that means is if I take, ins if I take Claritin D and you take Claritin D, um, if I experience insomnia, it has no impact on, if you experience insomnia, it doesn't affect the, or change the probability that you'll experience it. And then the probability, now this is weird. The probability of success. So what, what a success here is, a success of you, I wish you, I, I didn't want to turn my, my camera on yet, but um, I, I wish you could see me. I'm doing like quote air quotations with my fingers. A success here is that you experience insomnia because that's what we're counting. So it's, it's a little weird. So the probability of success, which is 5% never changes. All right, so here's the, I've got, um, uh, uh, a bunch of questions for you. Okay. And um, what I actually want to do is I want to get a new fresh slide for these questions. Um, so is everybody okay if I go to the next slide? Yeah. Everybody good, 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 good. Okay. So n was the number of trials. All right, I'm just going to write down the, uh, I don't know why I wrote example 30, example number three. Um, how, many, how many people were we talking to? So what is my n equal to? Okay, yeah. P is the probability of success. Okay, so remember what we're doing is we're counting the number of people who experience insomnia. Okay, so what's my P here? What's, what's, What's the probability somebody experiences insomnia, did I say? 0 0.05. Yep. All right, and X was equal to the number of uh, Claritin D users who experience insomnia. In 20. So my first question is this, what's the probability exactly to experience insomnia? All right, so it's the probability that X, the number of uh, people who take it and experience insomnia is equal to two. All right, so you could see where this is going, right? So is this a is this a PDF or CDF problem? It's a PDF. 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 Yep. Binom PDF. So the first thing goes n. So what number would I plug into my calculator first? Would be twenty. 20. Yep. And then P goes next. 0 0.05. Yep. Yeah. And then what? Two. Yep. 
Grab your trusty calculator. I'll do it in this one now. So you go second function distribution, you scroll down to binom PDF. And it was 20, 0 0.05, and then two. Yep. So do you get 0 0.18887 when we round there? How many people got that? I don't. All right, it's good, right? Good. Okay, zero point one eight eight seven. Nice, nice. All right. So here's the next question. What's the probability? that two or less experience insomnia. Uh, yes, for the, I got a private question asking, um, will you let us know on the test how many decimal places? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Also like I, I build a tolerance in on the test. So if you, if you actually like, if I say round to three, but you accidentally round to four, or, or if I say round to four, but you round to three, I, I actually end up accepting it. So, but just try to pay attention to what the, the problem says, okay? Okay, so what's the probability that two or less experience insomnia? All right, so first off, does this sound like a PDF or CDF problem? CDF. All right, it's gonna be CDF, yep. So you just have to figure out how to write it, okay? So two or less, is it option number one that's correct, that x needs to be less than or equal to two, or is it option number two, that x needs to be strictly less than two? Option number one. Is it one or two? What do you think? I heard two different answers. One, two. So here's the thing, two one. or less. So it's less than or equal to two. Yeah, it's option number one is the correct one. So do you see, you have to pay... You have to pay real close attention to how it's worded, right? Like if you look back here, this was just less than seven, less than seven. This one is two or less, or. So that or tells me here that it's gonna be this first one here. All right, so this is binome CDF. And again, it's always N, which is 20, P, which is 0 0.05 and X, which is this value right here, which is still gonna be two. So you're gonna grab your calculator. You're gonna go second function distribution. You're gonna go down to binome CDF, 20, comma 0 0.05 comma 2 and how many people got this anybody I got one me anybody else get that okay good good so it looks like it's 0 0.9245. All right. Everybody okay if I go to um, the next slide? I'm gonna ask you one last question and then we'll, we'll take our break, okay? What do you mean by can X be a different number? Like, are you talking about like in this example here, I, I had it the same number, is that what you're asking? 
Like it, it can absolutely be a different number. Yeah, yeah. It's just how I worded the problem. Yeah, totally, totally can be a different number. All right. What's the probability that, uh, let me, I'm trying to think here. More than three. Okay, so what's the probability that more than three experience insomnia? Okay, probability more than three. I don't know. I have no idea how to do this problem. It's weird, right? Because like all I've ever said was equal than equal and then also less than or equal to, but now all of a sudden I'm asking a more than problem. Ugh, I don't know. Has anybody got a suggestion? That is correct. Well, so yeah, you would use you would use the complement combined with the CDF. Yep. Yep, that's great. So, all right. So more than three. So that's the probability that X. If you want to be strictly more than three, it would be greater than or equal to four. Okay. All right, because those are all the numbers that are more than three. Okay. So whenever you have a more than, you're going to need to use the complement rule. So the opposite of more than three, all right, which is greater than or equal to four, is one minus the probability that x is what? This is the hard part here. What's the complement of X is greater than or equal to four? Yep, that's it right there. So it's X is less than or equal to three. So now this you can find in your calculator. Which is great. So how will I find X is less than or equal to three? What will I use in my calculator? A less than or equal to would be the binome. Yep, thanks Melissa, CDF, yep. So it's N which is 20 people, P, which is 0 0.05, oh, P. and then it's X, which is three here. So let's grab our calculator. So you're gonna scroll down to binome CDF It's 20 comma 0 0.05 comma three. And it looks like this is 0 0.9841 when I round it. So don't forget that you still have to do the one minus this. So one minus this is 0 0.0159, I believe. So again, it, it's just, the hard part is just setting it up. That's it, that, that's just the hard part. Like once you set it up, you know, the calculator does all the work for you. It's just, you gotta, you gotta set it up. Professor, could you just explain why it would be three? Here? 
So you, you have to remember all the things that the, all the values X could take on, right? So X could take on the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 20. Okay, because that's the number of people in 20 who experience insomnia. So when X is, is, is greater than or equal to four, it's all these numbers here, okay? So the complement would be all of these numbers. So that's why you need this three here, this less than or equal to three, because it's the zero, the one, the two, the three. So that, that's where the three comes from. Professor, on the left side doesn't get solved. This over here? The P, no, no, right there, the P, um, X. Yeah, yeah, that. So this is the answer to it. I'm just rewriting it to solve it. Like as it's written, I can't solve it using the calculator. So these are equivalent statements, okay? So this answer here is the answer to this. I just solved it using the complement rule. It's kind of like when we were doing the at least problems. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, before we go on break, I'm just gonna put everybody's mind at ease, okay? Um, the problems on the exam are more like the these two here. Okay, um, but you, 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 have, you have a problem here that you're, ready, that you're able to handle now, just in case. If you do the homework, okay, if you go back and look at the homework, right here, this homework, uh, problem number seven, if you do this problem, you're going to be more than set for the problem on the exam, okay, more than set. All right, so I want to take a little break before we get into homework questions and review. So, uh, does anybody have any questions before we go take our break? All right, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop out for eight minutes. I'll see you all back at two o'clock. Okay. Okay, Professor. See you guys in a couple minutes.
All right, everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Just coming back. Okay. So um, first thing I wanna do before I talk about the exam. Um, so your homework here and I know I've said this a, a ton of times, but this homework is like the best way um, to study for the exam. Okay. So um, does anybody, would anybody like to see me do any specific homework problems to help you all? Are there any homework for people who have tried the homework? Are there any problems that gave you any issues? Um, if you can do number seven, like the third part of number seven. Okay, yeah. So this is this is so number seven is a um, uh, binomial PDF or a binomial problem, right? Is that how you were tackling this problem? Um, yeah, but the the one that I wasn't like I was a little um, stuck on was like the third part where it says what is the probability that none of three have driven well under the influence of alcohol oh you're not talking about number seven then you're talking about number um, number four Four. i'm sorry it says seven points this way i got yeah number four, number four. the uh, third part okay so let me actually do that to answer the third problem you're actually going to need to do the first the, the the i'll do the the third and fourth part here for you okay so it goes like this um among 21 to 25, 25 year olds, 29% say they have driven under the influence of alcohol. Okay. So what that means, um, so this was number, uh, number four here. So we're going to talk to 21 to 25 year olds. And the probability they have driven under influence is 0 0.29. Okay, so by extension, what's the probability they have not driven under the influence? Yep, it's just one minus that, yep. That's okay, uh, in the message that just came to me privately, don't worry about it, not a big deal. Okay, so the problem went like this. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna select three 21 to 25 year olds at random. What is the probability that none, none have driven under the influence? Okay, so select three. What's the probability none have driven under influence? Um, so you have to figure out a way to write this, okay? Um, does anybody have a suggestion of how we can tackle this problem? No, no suggestions. Hmm. All right. So all Is three. A compliment? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Maybe the next one. But um. Okay. So you you can, but uh, the way I want to do it was with the um. Uh, I'm going to do it with the um. Uh, general multiplication rule, okay? Make it a little bit easier, but you actually can do it that way, Melissa. It's just, it makes it a little bit harder. Um, so it's the first has not, and the second has not. And the third has not, okay? Because I want all of them not to have driven under the influence. Well, look, the and statement implies what mathematical operator here? Multiplication. Yeah. Do I know the probability somebody has not driven under the influence? 
Yeah, it's 0 0.71. So this is 0 0.71 times 0 0.71 times 0 0.71. So this is just 0 0.71 to the third power. which gets you this. So it's 0 0.3579. So I forgot who asked the question, but was it just like figuring out the 0 0.71 that gave you a little trouble? Um, I think it was like the rewording of the, let me see. Yeah, one, three. it's a little weird. And like, while we're here, why don't we just look at number four? So what is the probability at least one has driven under the influence? Well, what, what keyword in here or what keywords give away how you're going to have to tackle this problem? At least. Yeah. So whenever you see the at least one, what do you generally do? It starts with a C. That's the complement rule. Yeah. So the next question was... Um, What's the probability at least one has? Driven under the influence? Well, that's one. The opposite of at least one has is zero have. So none have. Well, that's what we just found here. None have driven under the influence. So this is one minus 0 0.3579 which ends up being 0 0.6421, I believe. So did that help? I know the wording was a little confusing on that. Yeah, that helped, thank you. No problem. I will tell you this though, the one on the exam, just to give people like, I'm giving you hints as we go. Um, the exam question is a lot easier than this and, and, and the exam question should look very familiar. Okay. Um, so, you know, maybe you should have your notes handy, I guess, kind of like to help you as you go through this or, or make a, or make a note sheet of like some of the problems we've done. Okay. Were there any other questions on the homework people would like to see me do? No other questions? Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> okay, so then what I want to do um, now is I just want to go over some of the um, number two. Yeah, um, so this one here, um, I actually did this exact same problem in class. Um, but so instead of doing this problem for you, um, uh, you know what? What the heck? I'll I'll, I'll do I'll do this problem for you. <laughs> All right. So let's let's because this goes into my first question. That's also kind of like an exam review. So I'll actually do, I'll help walk you, everyone through question number two. So question question I'm going to do question two. Question seven is the binomial stuff we just did in class today, Beatrice. So now that you've seen me do the binomial stuff, you should be able to tackle question number seven with the calculator. Okay, okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna do a um, problem similar to question number two, but not the exact, not the exact um, uh, problem so that you'll have a chance to still practice on your homework. So question number two is kind of like an exam review here. So there's gonna be a coin flip or die roll question on the exam. Okay. It might be one of the first problems that you have. Okay. So instead of doing the exact problem there, let me, let me just do this problem here. Suppose you flip a coin two times and record your results.
Okay. So the problem on the homework is a little bit harder because <coughs> it's a coin flip die roll, but it's the same type of problem here. So the first question might be something like this. Is this a probability experiment? Um, does anybody remember the two, the two things you need to meet to be a probability experiment? I know it was a while ago. Results are uncertain. Uh, unknown results. Yep. So if I hold the coin two times, I don't know what I'm going to get. And does anybody remember the other one? So it starts with an R. It should be repeatable. Repeatable, yeah. So this, this is totally a probability experiment because it's uncertain results and repeatable. So yes, uncertain results and repeatable. Okay, next find the sample space. So when you go to do the next problem or the homework problem, you, you when you find the sand when you go to, when you find the sample space, it'll help you answer all those questions that are listed there. Okay. Um, all right. So does anybody remember what the sample space stands for? Like, what is the sample space for this outcome? It's the it's the it's the set of all possible what for this experiment. Um. It's going to be all possible outcomes. outcomes, yeah. And does anybody know how many total outcomes this experiment has? Twelve, I guess. Well, I'm only flipping a coin twice. The homework has twelve, but this one yeah. I'm just flipping a coin twice, and two times two would get me four. So there'd be four total outcomes. Here. So the sample space. The way you can find a small sample space is with this tree diagram. So the first thing you could do, you could flip a coin, you can get heads or tails. And then when you flip a coin again, you could also get heads or tails. So the sample space here would be, you could flip a head, then a head. You could flip a head, then a tail. You could flip a tail, then a head. Or you could flip a tail, then a tail. And these are all the possible outcomes here. So a question might be like this. What's the probability you flip at least one head? So it's probably at least one head. So you could do this without the complement rule. Like you could just look at this and be like, okay, there's four total outcomes, one, two, three, four. And how many of the outcomes can anybody put in the chat? Like how many of the outcomes is at least one head? Two. Uh, the, so this one and this one, I think. Is this a head head at least one head? It's It's got two heads, but is that still at least one? Yeah. So it looks like there's three here that are at least one head. All right, so there's gonna be, um, there might be a problem just kind of like this on the exam, okay? So, you know, if you look back in your notes, we've done like flip a coin three times. Your homework asks you to flip a coin four times. I've now done flip a coin twice. Um, so you should be, you should be okay. All right, let me see question number 10 on the homework. All right, so someone did ask about question number seven. Question number seven is the binomial stuff. Yeah, question number 10, okay. So this one says, for the Illinois lottery pick three game, a player must match a sequence of three repeatable numbers ranging from zero to nine in exact order. Okay, so you have to get the order right. 
but the numbers are repeatable, okay? So with the single ticket, what's the probability of matching the three winning numbers? So um, this lotto game, you need to get three repeatable numbers. Uh, in the exact order, okay. And I want to find the probability you win with a single ticket. Okay, so to figure this out, it's it's going to be um, uh, it's a probability, right? Like you need, you need to use the uh, the the the, the fundamental, fundamental rule of probability, okay? The, the, the classical method for computing a probability. So it's just a very simple division problem. So what goes in the numerator is the number of ways to win with a single ticket. Okay, and what do I need to find in the denominator? The total number of possible what? Anybody? I need to find the, uh, yep, the total number of possible tickets. Yeah. Okay, kind of what you guys were thinking. All right. If I'm going to have a single ticket, okay, what's the number of ways I can win with just buying one ticket? Yep, just one way. Okay. It's just one. So now I need to figure out the total number of possible tickets. Okay. I don't know. Does anybody got an idea that maybe can help me? I can figure out this. <laughs> All right. Well, how many numbers do I have to pick here? Three. Okay. So look, the numbers can be any value ranging from zero to nine. So the, the reason you can't do a permutations or combinations here is um, you only can use permutations or combinations when once you pick a number, you can't pick it again. But are the numbers repeatable here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Bertha has it right there in the chat. Yeah. It's just 10 options for the first number. I have 10 options for the second number and 10 options for the third number. So the probability you win with just buying a single ticket is one in a thousand for this game. And that's it. So, you know, like what this stuff always boils down to is, is like, Obviously the math isn't hard here, right? Like the 10 times 10 times 10 is not hard. What's hard is just, it's, it's always just like, what, what, what are they asking and how do I set it up? And then once you set this stuff up, it just falls into place. It's just setting it up is the hardest part. And I, and I understand, I, I do. All right, so I forgot who asked that question, but uh, seem okay? Yeah, yeah, I asked it. Yeah, it's, I'm good now, thank you. All right, were there any other um, any other homework questions? Because otherwise, last part of question nine. So the last part of question number nine here. So total number of possible computer passwords that must begin with a number followed by three letters. So when I don't specify if the letters are repeatable or not, you will assume that they are. So it needs to be a number followed by three letters. I don't know if that's the right answer, but let's see. 
So I've got to select four things here. If I'm going to select a number, okay, first, that's between zero and nine. How many options do I have for the first number? Yeah. And then how many letters are there in the English alphabet? Yeah. So just be 10 times 26 times 26 times 26. Mm -hmm. And then, so this is the right answer. Actually, it's 175,760. Yep, again, it's just, just setting it up. Like once you set it up, like it, it kind of falls into place. Okay, uh, let me just do a couple other problems um, that are likely to be on the homework or on the exam, excuse me, with the time we have left. Just so, just let me hit some of the problems that haven't been asked yet, okay? And then once these, this will kind of fill in the gaps for you. Okay. There's going to be a, um, a probability from a table question. Okay. Suppose you have this um, table of data. on students in a statistics uh, lecture hall. All right, so imagine there's this huge lecture hall, okay? And uh, it can fit more than a, you know, this is pre-COVID. <laughs> okay, obviously pre-COVID. Um, and it can fit a bunch of students in it. And I give you this type of breakdown on the students, okay? if the students are male or female, and if they're a first year student, a freshman or a second year student, a sophomore. And the numbers go like this, 20, 30, uh, 80, and then 70, something like this, okay? And then just suppose a student is selected at random. Okay, so even before I ask you a um, probability question here, um, what do you think it, you should do with these numbers here? Like, what do you think really helps you set this up, like to be able to figure this out? Should you like figure out some sums? Yeah, you want to get totals here, right? So like, let's get some column and let's get some row totals here. All right, so there were 50 male students in this class and there were 80 and 70. There were 150 female students. And it looks like there were 100 first year students and also 100 second year students. Uh, and it looks like there were a total of 200 students, okay? So you have, when I ask you these questions, <coughs> you have to pay um, very close attention to the wording here, okay? Um, is um, everybody okay if I go to the... Um, the next slide here to ask some questions on this. Everybody have the, the stuff written down? Okay. All right. So I'll flip back to this as we go to the table. Okay. So remember, you're going to, you're just going to select a student at random. Okay. First question is um, what's the probability? a male is selected. So it's a probability that you select a male student. All right, well, can anybody tell me how you could tackle this problem? Like how many male students were there? 
Yeah, and how many total students? Yep, so look, this is just the number of male students divided by the total number of students. So look, this is just 50 out of 200 or one fourth. All right, now, now I'm gonna to try to trick you something, okay? If a male was selected, okay, what's the probability they are a first year student? Okay. So let me ask you this. Am I giving you a, um, a piece of information here? What do you guys think? Am I like giving you an, yeah. Okay. So what am I giving you here? So you're given that, uh, I don't think you're given that they're first year, right? So if I, what did I say? If a male was selected, so you're, yep, that's okay. Yep, so you're, you're given that they're a male. Does anybody remember when you're given a piece of information, uh, what type of probability this was, what we called it? It started with a C. Ended in um, unditional. So it started with a C, ended in unditional. Nobody found that funny? Okay, thank you. Yeah, this was conditional probability. So I want to find the probability that they're a male, or excuse me, the probability that they're first year, I'm sorry, given that they were a male. So we wrote this as this, the probability of some event F given event E, okay? It's the number of E and F, things that are both E and F, so it's the number that are both first and male, divided by the number of just E, whatever's in the back here. So it's the total number of male first year divided by the total number of male. So looking back here, uh, total number of first year in male, how many are those? Yeah, if you look right here, it's just 20. And then how many total males were there? Yep. So this is just 20 out of 50, which is four out of 10, or 0 0.40. And that's it. Two out of five. <laughs> that's just what it really reduces to. <laughs> Professor. Yeah. The mistake I made was that I um combined like you know the male and the first year, and then I divided it by like total number of. Students. Yeah, that's that's a that's a common mistake. So you just have to like th that's the hard part is right. Like again, it's just like you know this is just simple division problem. It's just setting it up, you know, and like. You just have to be very, very careful of what, you know, what's asked and what's given. And I know it's, I know it's super easy to make a mistake. I, I get it. All right, you will get a question like this on the exam. So pay attention if it's just like, oh, what's the probability a male is selected? Or if it says, you know, if a male was selected, you know, then what's the probability it's a first year? Just like, just like pay real close attention, you know? All right, um, and then again, if you you know if you take a look at the homework, you know you get a chance to practice this on the homework here on question number five a little bit, you know, and you can see like the subtle difference, right? Like if a sixteen through twenty four year old male was selected, so I'm telling you to just look at the males, you know. 
All right, let me do one, one last type of problem we haven't really, you know, we haven't talked about either in going over the homework. Um, so, or, or done before. So one more review type problem. Okay, and so this is gonna be the general uh, multiplication rule. for uh, dependent events. Okay, it goes like this. Suppose you have uh, a bag of marbles, okay. Is your homework question a bag of marbles question? Let me see. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so I'm going to do a different one. So uh, forgive me, your homework question is a bag of marbles, but let me. Let me do a different one. Suppose um, an ice box has. Um, Let's do 12 cans of soda. Okay, and of those 12 cans of soda, let's say eight are regular and four are diet. So when I say ice box, what I mean is, is like, um, you know, now that we're getting uh, nicer out, you guys know like there's just like this tub and you fill it with ice and you know, usually throw drinks in it. Like here's one soda, here's another soda. You guys, know, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say this now? Okay. Like it's actually really nice today, right? Like, has anybody been outside yet today? Yes. No, I have not, so I am very jealous. Um, but like, so imagine you're just gonna go out on your patio and you're gonna have, you know, have some sodas, okay? Suppose uh, two sodas are selected uh, from the box, from the ice box. Box one right after the other. Without replacing the first. All right, so imagine I'm gonna just, you know, go into the ice, go into this, this tub and I'm gonna be like, oh man, I need a nice refreshing drink. I'm gonna grab one soda, I'm gonna toss it to a friend and then I'm gonna grab another soda, okay? So now I'm gonna ask you some probability questions. Um, may I go to the next slide, everybody okay? Okay. So the first question here is, what's the probability both are regular sodas? Okay. One second. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so what is the probability both are regular? Um, so I want to use the general multiplication rule for dependent events here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, it's going to be probably the first is regular. and the second is regular. So 
So can anybody tell me why these are dependent events and not independent? Yeah, so after I take one regular soda out, the probability I go get another regular is going to change because there's, you know, I remove one from, yep, from one from the, 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 the count. Okay, so it's going to change probability I get another one. All right, so I like to do this just without getting bogged down in the formula and take intuitively. Okay, so the first one is regular. So if you go back, there's eight regular, 12 total cans. So the probably the first one is regular is eight out of 12. Now what's the probability I reach in and get another one is regular? Yeah, yeah, well, if I, if I don't replace the first one, okay, there's only seven regular cans left. And there's now only 11 total, not 12. So I believe this is 56 over 132. So you just go eight times seven. Right, and then 12 times 11. So it's 56 out of 132. And on your exam, when you get to this question on the exam, it's actually going to be like multiple choice. It'll say, you know, it'll give you four different options to select the right one. And so you'll see this as one of the options and you won't actually have to, to, to solve it out. Like you'll just have to like pick how I have it correctly set up. Okay. And then that's like, that's your exam. I don't really need to do any other ones. And then there's just a few counting problems, um, but we've done some counting ones here. You know, just remember, uh, just final, final question here, just a few counting problems. Just remember the difference between combinations and permutations. So you use permutation when the order matters and combinations when the order doesn't matter. All right, so that's that's really all I have for you guys today. So we can end about 10 minutes early, um, unless anybody has any final questions for me. No questions? I just gotta say you're doing a great job, Professor. Thank you. <laughs> you're doing an awesome job, Oh, come on, you guys. I know you're trying to butter me up, but the exam is already written. Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> not true. I, did, I did algebra, and this is completely different, Professor. Like, the way you teach it is awesome. Well, let me, let me just...